So it's Sunday and on the challenge for today, I want to have us set up a routine. So Sundays are our day for mainly for relaxation, but we're going to review our last week and set up what we want to accomplish this coming week. So we need to have a game plan in place for us to be able to do that. I've got 10 tips for you today. So what is it that you want to accomplish? So number one, we're going to review our week. We're going to reflect on what happened last week that we did well, what didn't go well, what we want to change, what we need to do differently. So as an example, I did my video for yesterday early in the morning. I could not get my phone to upload for anything. So my review was going through my phone and realizing that I had a lot of data on my phone that wasn't necessary. And it's just spent two hours, literally two hours, deleting audible books that I've downloaded that I listened to, but I haven't taken off my phone or videos that didn't get uploaded to the cloud. So clearing out my phone so that when I finish this video, it's not going to take another 12 hours for it to upload. I got it the video yesterday. I think it was a few minutes after midnight. And that was frustrating to me that I'm trying to make sure that I have a schedule for myself with this challenge. And that's something that in review, I realized I needed to make sure that I have to check my phone. I have to check my equipment to make sure that it's working the way that I want it to work so that I can accomplish the things that I want to accomplish. Now, moving forward, I know that when I do a video, I make sure that it's uploaded to the cloud so that it's off my phone and that I don't have all this extraneous data on my phone that's going to stop me from doing what I want to do as far as accomplishing, getting videos done and all that kind of stuff. Number two, plan for next week. What is it that you want to accomplish for the week? Do you have these big goals? Do you have these big ideas of things that you'd like to get done for the week? By Friday, I want to have five videos up. I want to be able to have three extra videos done that I can upload to the community. I want to make sure that I've got workbooks. I've got all these kind of things that I'm creating that I want to start uploading to the community. So what does that entail? I know that I would love to do all these things, but I also have to include our regular business work. So doing invoices, <laughs> working with Roy, if we have installs that we need to do, or if he's got errands he needs me to run. And all of these things that I have to include into my day. We don't have a set nine to five job that I know I go to work at nine o'clock and I come home at five o'clock and I'm done. If you have that kind of job and you've got that structure, that's a benefit because that enables you to set up the things that you want to accomplish in between early in the morning after your morning routine or in the evening before your nighttime routine. You want to be able to incorporate these things into your day so that you can accomplish those tasks. So, and then breaking those tasks down into smaller chunks. I am really great about seeing the big picture and seeing the things that I want to accomplish. Not so great at breaking them down into chunks. And that's one of the things that I'm working on. Might be a future video on this challenge though. So we'll see about that. Number three is clear the clutter, clear the mental, the physical, your environment is really conducive or not conducive to a good working environment. Your brain has so much going on and then it sees all of this crap and it's, it gets overloaded or you've got so many to do's in your lit in your mind and you've got, you don't have it written down anywhere and your brain is kind of, Oh, I got to remember to do this. Oh wait, I have to do that. Oh wait there. Oh shit. I forgot. I have to do this. Oh my God, I forgot to pick up so-and-so. Left the kids at school. Not really, but you never know. I've been late once or twice. Never really forgot them. Thank God. Anyway, so as far as mental clutter, do a brain dump. I'm all about brain dumps. I've got notebooks everywhere that have an Evernote. God loves Evernote. It is amazing. If you don't know what Evernote is, it's an app on your phone. It's got the little green elephant head. Seriously, check it out. And ClickUp. ClickUp is my other thing. ClickUp is more for work and setting up my structure for my business, for 3D sign services, for, for this business. 
So take all of these things that are in your mind and put them into one place where you can qu quickly access them if you need to. If you've got Evernote on your phone, it syncs to your phone, to your computer, to your tablet if you need to. So if you put it in your phone, you don't have to worry about, oh my God, I'm not going to be able to find it again. Your brain has to keep track of all of this stuff. So if it knows that I've got a place where all of these things are stored, all of these ideas, all of the things that I've got to get done, all of the things I want to get done, it knows that there's a place for all that, then it can relax. It doesn't get so stressed out thinking I've got to remember all of these things and just going crazy. When it comes to your environment, I, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a video or a picture of what my environment looks like at the moment because what you see is this, not too bad. What I see is craziness. It's, it's insanity. Part of it over here is my altar. And as much as I go to try and clear it and straighten it up and do all that kind of stuff, I, I, I know there's a lot of stuff on there, but I like the way that it is. So this shelving unit here is my tarot cards, my oracle cards. It's sort of organized. The rest of this stuff, not so much. We are in the process of fixing this house. We have two and a half houses worth of stuff in this house. And even though we're going through it and we're donating the things that we don't need, eliminating what we don't want, there's still a lot of stuff in here and it's overwhelming. So I'm slowly whittling it down. And that's one of the things that I wanted to. To tell you about was a friend of mine, Christiana Carter. She's an organizational freaking genius. She told me about this 10 minute magic, and I'll share some information for her down at the in the link, the link down the bottom. And so, with 10 minute magic, you're working for 10 minute increments, and it makes things so much more doable for me. I get overwhelmed. This is a lot of stuff. Now, I know where things are and I can find them. I'm really good at that. Roy's like, where is whatever? And I'm like, third shelf down, on the right, five pieces back. I can tell them exactly where things are. But that said, this is too much. So that clutter, and this is only one room. I, I really should do a walkthrough of the entire house. You guys would have a coronary. But again, this is what the house looks like right now. As we work on the house and as we build things that we're doing, fix things up, things will be eliminated. Things will be put into place. Things will have a spot. Right now, everything is everywhere. So I don't have a spot. And so that clutter really makes me crazy. Our bedroom is not like this. Our bedroom is a bed, our two nightstands, a little desk in the corner and baskets for our dirty clothes and then a big round chair that we can relax in it is very minimalistic very simple there's not a lot of stuff in there i want to be able to go into a room that is not overwhelming that helps me to relax and i don't feel like because there's so much stuff around so clearing that clutter really makes a difference if you've got a room that you can take all of your shit out of and make a really nice sanctuary place and then work on all the other places, then do that. If you're someone who has the put together house and everything is beautiful, God love you because you're, you're the bomb. <laughs> Our other houses that we've worked on, as soon as we leave, it's so funny because we'll work on a house, we'll fix it up, we'll do everything that we need to do, and then we furnish it, put it up for rent, and and then we leave. So as soon as it's all prettified, we moved on to the next house. And it's like, well, shit, I haven't had time to enjoy this place. Anyway, and that's part of the reason why, honestly, oh, my nose. That's part of the reason why I'm outside so much is because that's where I go to decompress. That's the space that feels open and not cluttered. So going out to clean the pool, it's still relaxing to me because it's not in the house right now. Number four, even though we really don't have a particular meal time, 
I still like to have an idea of what we're going to have. So prep your meals. If you're someone who can cut everything up on Sunday and get it all ready and have it set for the week, then do that. Me, I'm not like that. I will do all the shopping, so we'll have all the food in the house. But I like something different. Let me rephrase. I'll be honest. I will go for a while and eat the same thing, like shepherd's pie, because I'll make a big pan of shepherd's pie, and then Roy and I will eat it for three days in a row. And he gets tired of it, but I'm on a shepherd's pie kick, so I'm having shepherd's pie. So if I meal prep, I've prepped all these different meals, but that food may not necessarily keep because I'm making a casserole dish, eight by 10 casserole dish for the two of us. And we're not going to finish that in one day. So we'll have leftovers and leftovers may not necessarily, I could, could probably freeze them. Just had an idea. But if you're someone who is working nine to five or has a, has a regular job, getting all your meal prep and everything all together, even if you have a menu of these days, I'm going to have this thing. And I know that I have the ingredients for this and I can make, I don't know, tuna casserole. I can't even remember the last time I had tuna casserole. But if you've got whatever the meals are each day, you've got them set up, you've got them prepared, you've got everything set. You Whether you cut all the vegetables up on, on Sunday and you've got everything, all you have to do is throw it in the oven. Great. If not, at least you've got an idea of what you're doing and you're not going to be sitting down and grabbing some crap food because you don't know what you're having for dinner that night. So part of having that prep for your week is that taking care of yourself. You want to have healthy stuff in your body. You can't do that if you don't have the groceries, if you don't have the food at home. And it's easier for you to go stop at McDonald's or whatever because you shit when I get home. I've got to do all this stuff. Well, part of it's already done. It's not going to take you that long, right? Right. All right. So what am I on? Five is self-care time. Make some time today for you. An hour is better than nothing. If you've got a family, you've got people around you that are constantly calling at you on your case or doing whatever, tell them you're going to take a minute. Tell them, you know what? I'm going to take an hour. You guys leave me alone. Go take a hot bath. Go lock yourself in a bedroom. Go outside and just leave everybody to their own devices. If you've got little kids, you may not want to do that. But if we're older, we've got nobody home. Empty nesters. Quick side note. As an empty nester, everybody's like, oh, you're going to be so sad. Empty nesters are, it's the worst time of your life. Fuck that. It is amazing. Being an empty nester is the greatest thing ever. I think we need to rephrase the whole idea that being an empty nester is the worst time. Yes, I miss my kids. Yes, I miss doing stuff with them. But God, now it's time for me. Seriously, I, I really believe that the people who have a trouble with empty nest, with the empty nest syndrome are the ones who dedicated their lives to their family and their kids. And now their kids are gone. They have no idea what to do. And that's the whole basis of this. This is why I built this community because I want you to understand that that is not the end of your life. The kids leave. Now it's time for you. Now it's time to figure out what the fuck you want to do and go do it. Seriously. Empty nest, the best time ever. All right. That was a tangent, but we'll stick to it. So self-care time. Take some time to, to figure out what do you want to do? What do you enjoy doing? Do I want to, do I want to take a hot bath? Do I want to go swimming in the pool? Do I want to just decompress? Do I want to journal? Do I want to paint? Do I want to write? Do I want to go to the, and build something? Do I want to, I don't know, create, do something that is just for you. Something that you want to do regardless of what anybody else thinks. I don't care if anybody else thinks you're being nut job and you're like, what the hell are you doing? I can't believe that you're doing that. Fuck them. Seriously. Tell them to fuck off. Tell them I'm doing my self-care time. This is for me, whatever it may be, and go do it. All right. Number seven, set your next week's intentions and affirmations. So what is it that you intend your week to look like? Do you want it to be freeing? Do you want it to be blossoming? 
Do you want your next week to be oh, fucking spectacular? Do you want your week to lift you up or do you want it to empower you? Do you want to have a better idea of where you're headed? If you've got an intention of how you want your week to run, then at the beginning of the week, you're repeating your intention. I want this week to be spectacular. Every day you wake up, I want this week to be spectacular. Then you're more inclined to have spectacular moments in your life. Set your affirmations. I am beautiful. I am wonderful. I am so smart. I can accomplish anything I set my mind to. If you want to, put them on little index cards and paste them all over the house. I have affirmations that I write in dry erase markers on the, fr on the bathroom mirror. Our bathroom mirror is covered. I have affirmations. I love you. You're amazing. I am full of potential and I'm using that potential. Baby, I love you. You're the best. Because I write messages to Roy as well. Because I want him to remember that how much I, I love and appreciate him. And as he's brushing his teeth, he's looking at these affirmations. Baby, you're the greatest. Baby, I appreciate you. So it's not only for me, it's also for him. So do your affirmations. All right. And if you don't know what your affirmations are, or you don't have any affirmations, then start thinking about the things that you would like to have, the way that you would like to be, the person that you are wanting to become, the whole day, the whole reason for this 30 day challenge is to be the person that we want to become. So how does that person act? How does that person behave? What do they do? How do they speak? How do they think? So all of these can become affirmations for you so that you start imprinting this onto your mind. All right. Number eight is this one should be a given because we did self care unplug for the day. Seriously, turn off the TV, turn off the social media, turn off the, the mind numbing crap. And I'm going to continue to harp on this. I think I've mentioned this in every single video <laughs> that, that I've made. Seriously, you'd be astounded when you look at the research of how many people sit and watch TV. Too many, way too many. If you're coming home and you're numbing out to Netflix and binging Netflix for the entire weekend, you've wasted 48 hours of your life that you could be doing something to improve your life, improve your situation, make things better for you. But no, you're going to sit on the couch and watch TV? What? No, that's not what we're doing here. The whole point is to restructure your life so that you improve and become that person that you want to be in the future. Does the future you sit and watch Netflix all day? God, I hope not. So unplug that, that time that you have for you, for your family, for the people around you that you love. Trust me, you will appreciate that more than sitting in front of the TV. If you've got a family, play board games. Oh my God, we used to play board games all the freaking time. We would have arguments and people getting upset, but so what? So what? You're spending time with your family, enjoying those little moments of what really matters in life. Standing or sitting in front of the TV does not make for memorable moments. It makes for mind numbing. It makes for dumb people. No offense, but it's the fucking truth. It makes for dumb people, especially if you're watching. So, all right, a few questions that you can ask yourself. I need my notebook for this so I can remember what they are. So where was your attention last week? Where has it been? What was it focused on? May, seriously, write these questions down and ask yourself and journal about this. What was I focused on last week? What have your thoughts been focused on? Were they positive? Were they negative? If they're negative, that's fine. We talked about this. That can be your motivation for moving you forward. I'm thinking these thoughts, they're not great thoughts, but that's my motivation for changing those thoughts. That's my motivation for improving the way that I talk to myself. So, and that's the next question. What things have you been telling yourself? Did you forget your routine and beat yourself up over it? Did you forget that, oh my God, I wanted to wake up a little bit early and meditate. 
or I wanted to add journaling into my routine, even if it was one or two, three to one, one to three pages. Did you did forget? And then you beat yourself up because of it. Oh my God, I'm so stupid. How the hell did I forget? It's such a simple thing. I slammed my alarm three times and I should have gotten up. Guys, breathe. Seriously, don't beat yourself up. We all make mistakes. If you realized it, that's a step in the right direction. That's a step moving you forward. I realized that I forgot to do this. So now tomorrow morning, you hit your alarm again and you're like, oh, I don't want to get up. It's too early. But then you think, oh, wait, I want to do my routine. I want to be the person that I'm meant to be. So you hit your alarm again. Yeah, so get up. If you went through your routine and you forgot to do something, oh, crap, I forgot to do my exercise. Well, add it in a little bit throughout the day. What is it that you can do? You can walk a little bit more. So don't beat yourself up if you don't do these things. Find a way to incorporate them into your, into your schedule in a more efficient way. Maybe there's something different that you need to change up so that you will remember. Here's an example. So we have supplements with vitamins, all that kind of good stuff. Roy takes his in the morning, mainly because I give them all to him. I take mine in the evening. Now, here's the thing. I could give, I could take mine in the morning when I give Roy his, but I give his, I give him his while he's eating breakfast. I normally don't eat breakfast. I'm not that hungry. So if I take it on an empty stomach, I'm going to feel like crap. So then I take it at night. I take all my vitamins and my supplements at night. And that way I have something in my stomach. So when I eat dinner, five, six, seven o'clock at night, I've got something in my stomach and I'm not feeling nauseous because I've taken my vitamins and I'm feeling like crap. Now, I know somebody's out there going to say, oh my God, that doesn't work. You're supposed to take them in the morning, but fuck you. This is my life. I'm going to take things when I want to take them. So I'm taking them at night. That works for me. If somebody else doesn't like it, good for you. Do whatever works for you. You've got to figure out what works for you. I figured out what works for me. So don't let other people tell you, you've got to do things in this particular way. Do things that work for you. What is it that's going to be in your morning routine or your evening routine that works for you, that nourishes you, mind, body, and soul? And then do that. And don't beat yourself up because Tammy said I need to do this, this, this. this. No. <laughs> no. Don't take my word for it. Figure out your own life. That's the whole point of this whole YouTube channel is, for help, is to help us figure out what we want to do with our lives. Me with mine you with yours, right? So the last one is, did you stick to your commitments to yourself? Did you stick to what you said you were going to do to improve your life? I'm going to do my morning routine, but I only did it for two days and screw it. I don't want to do it anymore. I'm going to go back to my old life. If you're okay with that, fine. Seriously, I'm not here to berate you, to tell you that you're crazy. You're not doing what you need to do. I'm, I'm not that person. I will call you on your shit if you ask me to, but I expect the same thing. That's one thing I really love about Roy's and my relationship is that we call each other on our shit. You said you were going to do this and you didn't do it. Now, if you've got a reason or some particular explanation as to why you decided you don't want to do it, fine. If you changed your mind, we're allowed to do that. We're allowed to change our minds. And now I want to do something different. Well, that's great. So the next question is, did you allow toxic people to derail you? Did you allow someone at work who was having a bad day to ruin your day? Did you allow somebody who's driving down the freeway, cut you off and completely screw up the rest of your day? If you're allowing these people to dictate the way that you enjoy the rest of your day, then you need to come up with a system to be able to combat that. To be able to say, you know what, they may be having a bad day. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna allow it to affect me. If the people who are toxic are in your immediate, immediate vicinity, your loved one, your parents, your kids sometimes drive you nuts. Don't, don't allow that to get into your frame of mind. Don't allow it to get into your head. Just give them space. Give them a little bit of distance. And if it's somebody who's constantly toxic, really keep that distance. Say, hey, you know what? I'm only going to associate with that person once in a while. I'm only going to see family gatherings. You get everybody together and it's like craziness. Well, I'm only going to see them at that time, a couple times a year. Don't allow the people who bring you down. And guys, 
I'm going to be perfectly blunt here. If these toxic people are your friends, they're not friends. And you don't need to have that type of, that type of person in your life. Fine. As you grow and as you become the person that you want to be, I talked about this before, you're going to find people who want to bring you back down. And those are the people that you're going to have to just gently let go and say, you know what? I don't want to have that person in my life anymore. They ask you to go do something. Thank you. No, I've got something else that I want to do. Or just politely distance yourself from that person. And trust me, the less that you're inclined to accept invitations or hang out with that person, that connection will eventually break off to your benefit. I know a lot of people think, oh my God, that's the worst thing. I'm going to lose all my friends. Guys, you'll gain new friends. You don't, I know that there are some people out there, but there are very few people who have the same friends that they had when they were in elementary school, middle school, and high school, college, if you went to college. Me personally, I think Roy is the only person that I know from high school. I, I First off, I traveled a lot as a kid. So me getting new friends, making new friends, well, that was a given. My sister and my brother were my best friends because we moved so much. They were the only constant in my life. So when it comes to your friends, you can make new friends. And if you're someone who's shy or introverted, trust me, you can still make new friends. Whether they're somebody that you happen to meet when you're at the grocery store or at Michael's, I've met a couple people like that. You just hit it off with. Then fine, start hanging out. But if you start leveling yourself up, trust me when I tell you, you're going to find people who are at that level or higher up if that's what you're willing to do. So don't worry about eliminating the toxic people in your life because trust me, the new right people will show up. All right. The last question is a bonus question, but still might be number 11. What are you doing differently this week? So this coming week, what are you going to do differently than what you did last week? Are you going to incorporate more of the routines in your, in your day? Are you going to change up the way that you dress? Are you going to change the way that you are when you're at work? Maybe you don't like your job, but you're going to say, you know what? I'm going to look for the positive while I create a side hustle. So even though this is going to fund my paying the bills right now, I'm going to appreciate it for what it's offering me right now. I may not like it, but I'm going to appreciate what it's offering me while I create something else. What are you going to do differently? Are you going to keep the same people? Are you going to sit at home and watch TV and do nothing? Are you going to eat the same crap food? Are you going to eat, drink the same crap drinks? Are you going to feed your mind the same crap information? Or are you going to change those things? Are you going to give yourself better nutrition mentally, physically, emotionally? Because that is what will change your life. None of that other stuff is going to do that. So don't beat yourself up because of that. Don't tear yourself down when you've only just gotten started. So what, we're on day four? Five? God dang. I think we're on day five of the challenge. So moving us forward, we've got, I've got, what, 26 more days and probably continue past that, whether it's a, an actual part of the challenge or not, but it's going to continue because it, as I've told you before, I'm creating a lifestyle. This is how I want my life to be. I want my life to run this particular way. And for it to do that, I've got to set these things up as a habit. So the more I follow through and each Sunday I go through my list and I'm like, okay, I did this, I didn't do this so well, I need to change that, I would like to change that, set things up in a way that makes it work for you. All right. I know I forget every time and I'll put a little subscribe thing, but subscribe, put the notification bell on so that you guys can come back. And I'll add some video, add the videos for the rest of the challenge on here. And you guys have a great afternoon. Don't forget to live life adventurously. Only way to live.